my story starts, as most of my favorite stories do, with a naked man running through the streets. <laughs> well, what comes to mind? You think he's running from a jilted lover? Maybe he's sleeping in the sanatorium? Training for the Noodle Olympics? No. Our protagonist is yelling, Eureka! So does that pull in the story for you? Do you know who we're talking about? Aristotle. No. 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 Archimedes. Archimedes. Sorry. Archimedes. Archimedes yeah, philosophy, yeah. is our hero for the day. <laughs> so, Archimedes was, was around ancient Greece. He lived in Syracuse. And at the time, he was famous for being a prolific inventor. He was a mathematician. He was a physicist. He was well known throughout the town for his, um, and, and credited with saving this town of Syracuse and Greece. What he did was he invented these war machines, such as the, the ship shaker, this big claw that would come over and shake a ship so that they couldn't uh, land and, and attack the city. And he had a heat ray. It sounds like very space age, but he had a heat ray. And what it was is great big glass. And he would focus the beam of the sun onto the ship until it burned. Saved his city again. And another, the, the Archimedes screw, which lifted water out of the bilges of these ships, their own ships, so that they didn't sink. Amazing, prolific man. But no one in his day and age would have thought that what made Archimedes famous was this story. Once upon a time, there was a king named Hiran. And Hiran was a conquering war hero. He came into the city of Syracuse as the victor. And to celebrate and thank the gods for this great victory, he asked the local goldsmith to take this bar of gold and create a wreath, a victory wreath, out of gold that is worthy of the gods and my thanks to them. So the goldsmith takes the bar of gold, thanks the king for the work, and goes back to his workshop. Busy, 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 busy. A month later, he comes back, and he's got the most amazing, intricate wreath, a laurel wreath that he's made out of gold that has leaves that come and overlap and form an enormous crown of gold. The king is thrilled. He's got something worthy of the gods that he's going to offer to them at his temple. He's thrilled, at least, until he starts to hear the rumors around town that he's been swindled by the goldsmith. Swindled that this wreath does not contain 100% pure gold. So when he weighs the gold, I'm sorry, he weighs the, the wreath, it weighs the same as the gold bar. But the rumor is that the goldsmith has put silver in place of some of the gold. The king is furious. He can't afford to offend the gods by giving them an offering that's less than pure gold. And he can't afford to be made a fool of in front of the, the town that he's just conquered. So he goes to his, uh, his little cousin, Archimedes, he's 22 at the time, and asks his cousin to solve this riddle. How do I find out if this wreath is pure gold without destroying it, because I can't, I don't want to lose all of this artistry. So Archimedes is thinking about this, and we all know that gold is more dense than silver. So if the goldsmith has in fact added silver to the crown, then the, the weight can be the same as a pure gold crown, but the density would be less, right? Because it's got, um, because it's got silver instead of all gold. So Archimedes knows this, but there isn't a way, in all the mathematical formulas he's come up with, there isn't a way for him to, uh, to calculate the area, the volume of this really irregular object. So he's, he's, he's pondering this, and he goes to the local bathhouse. Bath, steaming hot bath is, is 
filled to the brim and, and waiting for him. So he puts his leg into the bath and the water starts to spill out. And he puts his other leg into the bath and more water spills out. And he realizes displacement. The volume of his body that's in the water is displacing the, the same volume of water that equals his, his volume. So that's how I can do it. Eureka! He shouts. I've found it. Doesn't take time to get dressed. He's got to get this idea on paper. He's got to get home. So he runs through the streets yelling Eureka as he gets back to his house. My favorite part of the story. <laughs> so he gets home and he sets up the experiment. So he's got a big vessel, fills it to the brim with a bar of gold. The same bar of gold, same weight that the king gave him initially to the, to the goldsmith. So he puts that in the, in the water, the water spills out. When he removes it, the amount that the, the water has gone down is equivalent to the volume of that weight in gold. So when he puts the, the crown into the water, if it's pure gold, it should come right to the top. If it's not pure gold, therefore the volume, the same weight is greater, you'll have spillage. So that's what happened. He takes the bar, he takes the crown, and when he puts the crown in, more water spills out. The goldsmith has been discovered as a fraud, as a cheat of the new king. So Archimedes takes this story, he takes the, the data to the king, and the king is victim the, um, he is vindicated. Living, living. Vindicated. Vindicated. Exactly. Exactly. Vindicated is what I was thinking. The B word. The king is vindicated. He was right. And he is not to be taken for a fool. Archimedes was hailed as a hero. The goldsmith was run out of town, never to be heard from again. So today, although many people use Archimedes, inventions and the basis for his, his physics, his levers, they use his calculus. I don't see a lot of impact of Archimedes on my, my current life. But last weekend, when I fell asleep in the tub and woke up with the answer to a problem I've been working on for months, jumped out of the tub yelling Eureka and streaking to my desk to get the paper and write it all down, I appreciated his story. And if you're interested, happy to tell you this solution that I came up with. I'm pretty excited about it, obviously. But I will never tell what my neighbor said when they saw me streak across the window that day. 